Kelly's Valtgen here. Today we're gonna learn one of the big classics of Swedish repertoire. At least that's how it feels to me. It was one of the first tunes I learned when I got into Scandinavian folk music. The Sleng Polska from Bersbeck. Bersbeck is a place in Skåne, very south of Sweden, and it's known for two things. This tune and its nuclear power plant. So let's not talk about the second one. I first heard this tune from Jennifer de Marais, a French Nick Harpa player, who played it with a very different style than when I learned it the second time from Mia Marin, a Swedish fiddle player. For me this was a very good example of how different the same tune can sound when played by different musicians. This tune is a slang polska, so you will have an equal weight on beats 1, 2 and 3. And also the tempo is not gonna be too fast. However, you might meet some people who play it as a 3-1 polska and therefore have a bit heavier 3 and 1 and a bit higher tempo. Skåne is very much a slang polska region, but you know, you do you. I'm just telling you where it's from and how it's usually played, but then if you want to play it completely differently, it's up to you, as usual. Also, this tune was collected in Svenska Låtar, the Swedish tunes. In that book it's collected in A minor. A bit of discussions about is it actually A minor, but to me it is. With F and G. But I personally think that it sounds better in other keys, especially a bit lower keys, because the original has a lot of E. It revolves a lot around the note E, and it can sound a little bit high and possibly aggressive. Depends on your ears, what you're used to, what instruments you like and you play. But I personally think that it sounds very, very well, a little bit down. More on that later. So, shall we get into it? A part. notes a little bit slower the first time and the second time very clear we can add a little ornament at the end Or even a little D sharp before the E. And this part is really nice for double stops and a bit of rhythmical variation because if you go just where is the rhythm in that? It's not very danceable, also it's the start of the tune so you want something a little bit more dynamic. What you can, for example, do is add a little mordant to mark not just the beat, but the half beat. So, the quarter note. Already much better. But double stops are really the thing for this tune. And what we're going to do is first a unison. E, E. Release. E and A, and then the low E. So you can play. You could add the mordant. Or you could do what Mia Marine calls daistroak, which is to give kind of an accent, not with the speed of your bow, but with the shape that it does um, in the air, if you want, what your hand does in the air. And 
you can also combine that with the mordens. If you want to do it extra strong. But you can also decide to play it very light. For example. So it's really up to you how much you want to emphasize those half beats or not. And then for other ornaments, well, in the little 16th notes, you can add not so much because it's already fast. Of course, you can always. The, those ones would be the two ones that I would put most of the time. They are both on the first finger. And on to the B part. Our B part is composed mostly of two chords. The first one being composed of G, B and E. And then we do what we call rullstråk in Swedish, so rolling bow. Three times. Then we have the second chord which is F, A and E. So we, did, we do three times the first chord, three times the second chord, and then we repeat all of that. And then we have a conclusion phrase. Slower from the A. Then here again, or even. Note that my F is a little bit blue. It's not. It's, it's a little bit higher than a fully tempered F. That's how I like it. You don't have to play blue notes. And if you're a beginner and trying to get your intonation in place, maybe better not to get into blue notes yet. So for this part, the feature is really, really this rolling bow, rullstråk. If you really don't know how to do that, no worries, it's an upcoming video I'm preparing. We're gonna talk about that in details and learn how to do it really well. But for the time being, for this tune, um, the rullstråk is divided like this. So it's two and two. Except that it should be much more smooth. One of the problems you might encounter here, besides the intonation, which is not easy, is that the E string is gonna sound too much. My violin, for example, has a tendency to explode, to have very very strong sound on the E string, open E, and naturally an open string will sound more than strings on which you have your fingers. So what you should do is try to not touch the E too much, not take it too much, but just touch it and emphasize maybe a little bit more the bass notes. G and F. So, not. That will do. What we want is more like. And the E is gonna resonate anyways. And ornaments, you know, as usual, more dance, maybe a little Swedish drill, for example. What I really like to do personally is the last time I play through the B part, so doesn't matter how many times I play the tune, I play this only in the last last time I play it, instead of playing so E, A, I play. with a little G-sharp in between. It really kind of concludes the tune. You know. This tune is quite a well-known one, and weirdly it seems to be more well-known and popular in continental Europe than in Sweden. 
sometimes this happens, but in general it's a quite popular and well-known tune and you will find people to play it with, I guarantee. As said earlier, I personally think that this tune sounds actually better a little bit lower and I think it's a wonderful tune on Lika Harpa. First, because you don't have the problem of intonation, <laughs> which is always nice when you do some rullstroak, but also because just the sound of the instrument just fits the tune somehow. It has this flowing quality with all the resonance that just goes well with this tune that stays all the time on the same kind of notes and feeling. If you're interested, I did record this tune on my very first album with my very first band. And I'm still pleased about the arrangement we made with the guitar player. And it's on Spotify, so link in the description if you want to check it out. And I was thinking about demonstrating also just in this video now how it sounds good on a nickel harpa. Before that, uh, just don't forget to like and subscribe, share this video with your musical friends and consider supporting me on Patreon. Big and warm thanks to my patrons, by the way, and I hope you will have a lot of fun playing this tune.